right, open your Bibles, if you would, to, uh, to Luke chapter 18. And we'll be getting there in just a moment. This is the fifth part in our, uh, in our series on, on prayer. And uh, so far, it's actually our sixth part, but it's our, five, our fifth, uh, fifth lesson. It's complicated. It's very tough being a pastor sometimes. Numbering is very, very difficult. And uh, so we've, this is, uh, we've, we've gone through the, the foundation and the function of prayer. Uh, we've, looked at, um, we've looked at the faith of prayer. Last week, we looked at the focus of prayer. This week, we're looking at the frequency of prayer. And, uh, you know, next week, it has to start with an F. I mean, it just can't not start, so it's going to be... Um, well, I'll tell you next week. Okay. I'll, let you, uh, I'll let you be all uh, inquisitive. But uh, at any rate, we are talking this morning on the frequency, or the fervency rather, of prayer. The fervency of prayer. Uh, this has been a real great message for me because it's, uh, I, I preach at myself uh, just as much or more than I preach at you. And uh, I wouldn't even call it preaching at as much as it's... Uh, uh, more of uh, it's stirred in me and a desire to uh, to pray to pray more and to pray with uh, more fervency and uh, last week as we talked about the focus of prayer I, I, I even this week I thought about it even that much more I thought about how how much we ought to be focused in in our prayers and on our prayer lives and while we're praying and and uh, so so this is a, this is a message to me when I think about the fervency of, of our prayer. And I think without any question, one of the areas that, uh, that Christians uh, lack in their prayer life is the fervency. I think we can do a lot of things, but when it comes to just praying fervently, I think we lack that. Uh, prayer oftentimes is, uh, becomes less serious. And, and, uh, and you know what I'm talking about. There are things in life that we take less seriously. We, we, we kind of diminish their importance. And I think... Uh, prayer as a whole is diminished, but I think that the fervency of prayer is even that much more diminished. And uh, I think about uh, some of the, the, the conversations maybe that I've had in my head over, the, over many years, and uh, you can probably think of them too, how, uh, how you've thought about a conversation that you were going to have, but in your mind you kind of play it out. How many of you all have done that? How many of you have played a conversation in your head, whether it's with your boss or with your spouse, or with your kids, or whatever it might be, in your mind, you, you kind of play out the conversation. And a lot of times, it never goes anything like that, right? You, you spend hours and hours thinking about something that is, it may happen, and, and you don't actually, uh, it doesn't actually go that way. It goes totally another direction. And, and I think when it comes to prayer, we need to have a fervency and a focus in our lives. I remember, I remember, uh, uh, you, you a couple years back, in 2017, I was invited, as many of you know, to the, go to the White House, to the Rose Garden, and uh, it was on the National Day of Prayer. It was kind of cool. And, uh, and in my mind, I was having these conversations with myself. And the conversations went something like this. Well, if I get a chance to meet the president, what am I going to say? And so you start to have these, these talks with yourself. And I, I thought about all sorts of stuff. Like, how can I be a, an encouragement to the president? Like, he's gonna, like, there's only 100 people, so I figured the chances are, are pretty good, right? And uh, the, the, uh, the Secret Service kind of put a kibosh on that. But anyway, uh, it was, uh, in my mind, I'm thinking, I'll just be an encouragement to him. I just want to stick my hand out and say, Mr. President, keep up the good work. I, I had one conversation in my head because I didn't know what to say, so I was thinking, hey, the, the garden looks great, Mr. President. <laughs> Like in my mind, you just come up with all of these things. And what I ended up doing, ironically, was I met some of the staff. And I, and I remember standing over next to this one guy, and, and uh, I said, so how long have you been working here? And he's like this, <laughs> about 20 years. <laughs> and uh, the conversation didn't go anything like I thought it would, but he was a super guy. And, and uh, at, any rate, at any rate, this was, uh, this was a serious opportunity to be able to potentially speak to the President of the United States. So in my mind, I come up with all of these, uh, these topics of conversation that, that never happened. Um, that was only the President. That was only the President of the United States. 
Now I say that not because I would want to meet a president of, of, of another country, but because this is not God. Let me ask you a question. When you go to the Lord in prayer, are you considering the fact that you are about to have a conversation with the Lord? Because a conversation with the Lord is, is of great more significance than a conversation with the President of the United States. R.A. Torrey said, before a word of petition is offered, we should have the, the definite and vivid consciousness that we are about to talk to God, that we are talking to our, our living Heavenly Father. Do we have all of that? Do we have a, a vivid consciousness of that? When you go to God, are you, uh, are, are you going with that kind of, of thought? Are you going with that kind of thrust? Are you, are you going to, to the mercy seat? Are you going to your Heavenly Father in, in fervency and ready to ask Him a, a question? Ready to ask Him to answer one of, one of your, your prayer requests? Where does your fervency lie when you talk to the Heavenly Father? This isn't the President of the United States. This is the King of the world. The King of the universe. Good grief, it's the Creator of the universe. And this is really, really significant. Do you feel that way? Well, I want to talk real quickly about two th quick things. The parable of a judge. And in Matthew 18, it begins this way, beginning in verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge, which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith? And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. This was a great parable of a judge who heard the petition of a widow and gave in. This is a, a, great, a great parable of, 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 a, of an individual, of an unjust of an unjust judge, of all things, not a just judge, but an unjust judge, who neither feared God nor regarded man. He didn't care about God, didn't, regard, didn't care about man. And you know what? When a widow came to him and began to petition him, he caved, didn't he? Lest he became weary. So will God hear the fervent pleading of his own children. And we see that from verse 7. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night? Now that's a, a wonderful phrase. Which cry day and night. Do you cry to God? Are you fervent in your prayers? When it's time to petition the Lord, do you go to him and do you cry day and night? And do you ask Him, do you beg of God continually? Suffice it to say that uh, many prayers are not done this way. Many prayers are, are, are and, I'm, and I'm talking about myself here too, many prayers are not done this way. Many prayers are, become casual. They become, uh, uh, they become minimized. And there is no fervency in our prayer life. I was talking to someone just the other day, and I cannot even remember who it was. And I said, if you take a, if you take a, a snapshot of, of, of all of the successful companies uh, in the world, they were successful because, uh, because they were pursuing one thing and there was no mediocrity. They weren't mediocre. Let me ask you something. Does a mediocre prayer work? I don't think it does. I don't think we're meant to be successful if we're just mediocre. 
when we go to God and pray, when we ask Him, I just put myself in God's shoes for just a moment, and I'm not God, but just put yourself in His shoes for just a moment, and, uh, and you have your, your, your uh, in a sense, unworthy subjects, but they're worthy, made worthy by the, by the blood of Christ. They come to you, and they, and they ask you in a very casual way, uh, uh, Lord, um, could I have uh, such and such? And, uh, and I say, as God, I say, well, maybe not quite yet, but just, just not quite yet. And they go about their merry way and, and never to be seen again. Right? The, 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 those that came to petition the king, the just judge, the one who has the ability to give them anything they want, and, uh, and they come to me and they say, and they say uh, uh, I just want such and such. And then they go with little or no fervency at all. Can I say this, that the fervent prayer, the fervent prayer is the prayer that gets answered? Can I say it's the one that goes to God and, and continues to petition and continues to petition and continues to petition and continues to petition and asks and asks and asks? Not because God gets weary, but because He's God and you need to go to Him and ask with fervency. You know, we're never going to wear God down, are we? We're never going to wear Him down to the point He can't give us anything. Unlike the unjust judge, the Lord is very compassionate. In Romans 8.32, He says, He that spared not His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, how shall He not with Him also freely give us all things? If God gave us so much, why wouldn't He give us just a little? If God is willing to, to give us the, the whole pie, why wouldn't He give us a piece of the pie? He gave us His Son already. All we need to do is go and ask. You cannot outgive God. And you can't outask Him either. You just keep going to God and you keep going to God and you keep going to God and you keep going to God. You know, a fervent prayer life is one of the best indicators of your faith. I, I oftentimes, I, I ask myself, if there were some indicators in my life, what would be the one thing that maybe I would say, I would say, Lord, I, I, I really believe that this is, is the one thing that, that, that I, I can offer. And how do I gauge? Like, what's the metric there? And I think that people who go to God fervently in prayer, continually praying and asking God and asking God, He's not deaf. You're not asking Him because He didn't hear you the first time. But it's an extension of your faith. It's knowing, it's knowing that God is capable of answering our prayer. He is hearing our prayer. And He can give you anything that He chooses He wants to give you. My, my kids are, I love this example because I think that my kids fit into this category. They say, Dad, can we go fishing? And uh, like every busy father, I say no. <laughs> and, uh, but you know what? I say maybe, maybe, maybe next time. And you know what? They come to me again and they ask me. They say, Dad, can we go fishing? And I say, I'm sorry, son. We still can't go fishing. And, uh, and they say, Dad, can we go fishing? And, and later I say, you know, son, you, know, you, 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 you can't just keep asking me. This has been 15 minutes since the first time you've had. No, I, I don't say that. But I say, you know, I'm, I'm just really trying here. But you know what this is? This is an extension of their belief in me that I can indeed take them fishing. You see what I'm saying? And so that frequent, or that fervency rather, that, that continual asking is an extension of their faith in me as their father. And I think it's a, it's a real good indicator of our spiritual condition. Charles Spurgeon says, prayer is the natural outgushing of a soul in communion with Jesus. Just as the leaf and the fruit will come out of the vine branch without any conscious effort of its, of, on the part of the branch, but simply because of its living union with the stem. So prayer buds and blossoms and fruits out of souls abiding in Jesus. When we go to God and we ask Him and we pray, and we pray continually, fervently in prayer, I think it's a symbol of us abiding 
in the vine, having a right relationship with the Lord, and having our faith properly placed in Him as the one who can give us exactly what we're looking for. So let me ask you a question. Is that, is, is, is that, uh, is that in your life? Is this, is, this, is this continual asking? Is that in your life? Do you do that? Do you go to God and continually ask Him? Looking at our own spiritual life. Look there and see if there is faith, if there is focus, and if there is fervency with the Lord and in prayer. Second thing, not only do we want to talk about the parable of a judge, but we want to talk about the example of a prophet. The example of a prophet. So look at James chapter 5, if you will. James chapter 5, beginning in verse 16. It says this, Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another. Now, let me, I, could, I could stop right there. I could preach a whole message on just that. Do we confess our faults one to another and pray for one for another? You know, I find myself coming to this passage and just saying to myself, Joe, be vulnerable. Be vulnerable. How can a church pray for their minister? How can one person pray for another person if, if, if they think that they're uh, uh, holier than thou, if they, if they feel that, that there is no penetration in their armor? You know, one of the greatest ways to get people to pray for you is to just be real, is to just be vulnerable and confess your faults to them and say, hey, brother, sister, I am not perfect. You know what it would be like if, if I only had myself to pray for me? That'd be horrible. I hope, and, and I know, I know that many of you folks pray for me, and I thank God for that, because I, I, got, a, I got a lot of things I got to work on in my life. And it's wonderful to know that I have so many people who pray for me. But you know what's even more successful? When you can go to somebody and you say, you say, hey, listen, I'm not perfect in this area. And I could really use some prayer. I could pray. I'm confessing that I, I have faults in my life too. It says in this verse, that ye may be healed. I, I love that. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. He gives a, a, a little snippet into the Old Testament here in verse 17 and 18. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth for this, by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I put it this way, that the passionate prayer is powerfully productive. Passionate prayer is powerfully productive. That's what it's about. It's about going to God in passion. Going to God and being effectual and fervent. It's asking Him over and over and over and over and over again. You can't weary Him. You're not going to wear Him down. And even that much more, it's to the glory of God that you continue to go to Him and ask Him for something. Can I just say back to my kids? They keep asking me and keep asking me. They're not wearing me down. Well, maybe a little. But you know what this tells me? This tells me that they believe that I can indeed satisfy the fishing trip. And you know what that does for me? That makes me gloat a little bit. Because they didn't ask you all to go fishing. They do want Max to take them fishing sometime. <laughs> So they did ask one person. Passionate prayer is powerfully productive. Elias, or Elijah in the Old Testament, this is great, was a man of like passions as we are. This to me is, is really good. You know, uh, used of God? Yes, he was. Better than us? No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I think Elijah was a man of like passions like we are. He had the same problems that we have. You know that? Maybe not identical. He probably didn't have an addiction to his iPhone, right? But he had plenty of problems, I'm sure of that. And you just read the story in 1 Kings 17 and 18. He had, he had problems. 
But was he better than us? No. You see, in the Old Testament, remember that, that an individual was saved the same way as in the New Testament. Both people saved by faith. Okay? But they did not have something that we have, and that's the Holy Spirit living in them. We have the Holy Spirit living in us. He had the Holy Spirit power upon him, and he was able to pray. Do you think he has something that we don't have? I think we actually are better off than he is because we have the Holy Spirit living in us. This was the importance of Jesus going away. He said, it is expedient that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, will not come unto you. I am so thankful that Jesus did depart for a variety of reasons. One of those reasons is he gave us the Holy Spirit to live with inside of us. Inside of us. We have the Holy Spirit, unlike Elijah, living inside of us. And in 1 Kings 18, 42, we see this fervency. We see this fervency. And Elijah, it says in 1 Kings 18, 42, it says, And Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. Now let me ask you something. Does this exemplify your relationship with God? Do you get into that, into that focus and that, and that fervency where you can just say to God and cry out to Him, maybe like Elijah was doing? Do you, in a sense, cast yourself down in front of the Lord? Do you put your face between your knees and do you beg God until He hears you? Well, we ought to. He did what we all should do, what we all could do but failed to do. And that's to passionately pray. To passionately pray. And he wasn't going to give up until he got what he was looking for. John Bradford said, When I know what I want, I always stop on that prayer until I feel that I have pleaded it with God and until God and I have had dealings with each other upon it. Do we feel that way? Do we feel like we go to God and we just don't give it up until we have talked to God in totality about it? Do we pray that way? I know that there are times in my life when I, uh, there are times in my life when I, when I pray more, f more fervently than others. Have you ever done that? You pray more fervently than others? Maybe you're, maybe you're ill or maybe you lost a job or, or something like that and, and uh, maybe there's been a real tragedy in your life and, and, and that's when you cry out to God. Right? You cry out to God day and night. And you begin to beg him until you hear the, the definitive answer. Well, I think that should be our whole prayer life. I struggle with that because most of those times that I've prayed so earnestly have been times of, of, of trials and troubles in my life. And it's easy to pray like that when times are going, when times are going south, right? When times are going bad, it's easy to pray fervently. But what about when times are good? Do you still pray fervently to God? Do you look for the perfect peace in your life? And there are times that I find it. You guys ever do that? You pray for something? And uh, maybe, maybe even you, you pray fervently for just a short period of time. And you know what? Bang! God gives you just this perfect peace. I just love that. I, lo I love that overwhelming sense of, of peace in my life. I think about uh, you know even this even this parking lot out here right we're we're we're, we're praying that that we get the funds for that parking lot but you know what if it doesn't happen I'm okay with that I, I I'm okay with it. it 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 doesn't matter to me I want that in God's time I did you I don't want something that God doesn't want me to have I only want what He wants for me. And if that's not in his will, I'm okay with that. And you know what? I have perfect peace about it. It's been like that for a long time. And it can be like that for a lot longer. And you can pray fervently and eventually you say to yourself, Okay, Lord, I've dealt with you on this matter and now I'm going to give it up. And there are times that we need to do this. There are other things, there are other things we need to pray and never be satisfied with. For instance... Maybe, um, maybe someone in your life who, uh, who doesn't know Christ as their Savior. Never give up on that. That's something, listen, the Lord is willing that none should perish. 
And you just keep going to God and you keep going to God and you keep going to God until they get saved or until they die. You just keep going to God. There are things in your life maybe that, that we become satisfied with that we ought not to be satisfied. Let me say this, the spiritual growth. Your spiritual growth. Are you satisfied with that? Or do you, do you continually seek God in this? Do you continually, do you pray, do you pray fervently, Lord, help me to be a better man. Help me to be more spiritual in my life. Help me, Lord, to be more, to be more focused on you in every area of my life. But when it was regards to spiritual things, this is important. And never be satisfied. You never get up. You never be weary about this. There are things I, 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 I will never be satisfied with the spiritual condition of this church. I will never be satisfied with my spiritual condition, with my children's spiritual condition. I will continue to go to God. I will continue to be fervent about this issue. And I will continue to beg Him, Lord, help this church, help this people. Don't ever be satisfied with that. Colossians 4.2 says to continue in prayer. Romans 12.12 12 says continuing instant in prayer. Is that what we're doing? Are we continuing instant in prayer when we know that something comes up in our lives? Do we go to Him right away? Do we go to Him right away and say, Lord, I need Your help! Or do we say, well, we'll deal with this some other time. You know how many times someone has said something is wrong and I say, well, you know what, let's pray right now. Because the Bible says to continue instant in prayer, and I'm not going to give up, I'm not going to leave until we pray about this matter. We need to be fervent about it. We need to seek God on these things. All right, Tori says one of the great needs of the present day is men and women who will not only start out to pray for things, but pray on and on and on until they obtain that which they seek from the Lord. Do you do that? Do you pray on and on and on until you obtain that which you seek from the Lord? Do you go to Him and do you beg Him over and over and over again? Are you like, the, are you like this widow who continued to seek the judge? Continue to seek Him that, they, that this judge would avenge for her. Do you continue to seek God? Answer to prayer like Elijah. Let me just give you a quick bit of application here. Seek for areas of improvement in your prayer life. Seek for areas of improvement in your prayer life. You know, any one of these issues that we talk about, whether or not it's, it's the faith, the focus, the fervency, we'll talk later about the frequency, how often do we pray? How much do we pray? Where's our prayer tension? Where's that going? Seek areas in your life where you can do better when it comes to prayer. How can you improve? Don't be satisfied. As a matter of fact, let me just give you this challenge. Pray about your prayer life. Pray about your prayer life. Don't let that go. Don't ever be satisfied. Don't ever be content or, or complacent with your communion with God, with your communication with God. You just got to keep going back to Him. Pray about your prayer life. Most of us just pray within our prayer life, but we don't pray about our prayer life. We don't say, Lord, listen, this would be a, a, an interesting uh, illustration. Uh, my kids, my kids are, uh, you're, uh, maybe I've mentioned this or not, but they are uh, about four or five years away from going off to Bible college. And, and I said to them, I said, you know, I'm, I'm, I, just, I just really want you to, to, uh, to, con to talk to me, to call me on the phone. Oh, Dad, we'll call you all the time. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I, you know what I said to them? I said, how often do I call my mom? How often do I call grandma? They were like, oh, I don't know, not very often. I said, how often do I call my dad? Never. Right. Now you know why I'm concerned. Right? I want my kids to call me all the time. And they do a good job right now, right? They, they have the church phone, and, and I'll be in a meeting, and I'll look down, and it'll say Northside Baptist Church, and, and, uh, and I'll, hello? Hey, buddy. Hey, this is Josh. I just got a quick question. Can we go fishing? <laughs> just seems to be the question. 
Look for opportunities to improve your prayer life. Pray about your prayer life. And in conclusion, let me just say this. Go to God and talk to Him as a man talks to his friend. You can pray with fervency, but go to God and just talk to God as a man talks to his friend. You don't have to be flashy in your prayer life. I, I, can I say this too, that, that that's a turn off for me when, when somebody has learned the prayer life. Uh, Charles Spurgeon, he says, look well to it that you really pray. Do not learn the language of prayer. And I, I find that there are a lot of people who just have learned the language of prayer who know what to say because they've heard others say it. And, and some, of the most, so, some of the most excellent prayers come out of the mouth of children because they haven't learned the prayer language yet. And you know what? They just go to Him and they ask God outright and they are consistent about it. And they are consistent about it. And they are consistent about it. And they pray with tremendous fervency. Do that in your own lives. May we all do that. May we all be prayer warriors. And I don't just throw that term around. Power comes through prayer. So if we're not praying, we won't have power. So if we want that power, we've got to pray. And we've got to go to God all the time and ask Him. I said something a while back. I said uh, uh, one quote. This one guy said, uh, uh, Time spent in prayer is not wasted, but invested at big interest. And that's what it is. You go to God and we just need to pray. And friends, if you're here today and you don't know Christ as your Savior, I look around the room and I think, I think everybody does. And, but, I, but I cannot, I mean, listen, uh, Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, right? So I'm going to preach the gospel. The gospel is the good news that Jesus Christ came to this earth to die on the cross for yours and my sin. I want this hand right here, and I mean it reverently, to represent the Lord Jesus. Uh, I want this wallet to represent all of our sin. The Bible says that God loves us but hates our sin. The Bible also says that the wages of this sin is death. That's the payment that must be made. The payment is that there's a death, a death payment. It's not a baptism payment. It's not a prayer payment. He's not looking for a down payment. He's looking for a death payment payment. Somebody has to die for this. Well, if we die with this sin, we're going to spend an eternity separated from God forever. But 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ came to this earth to die on the cross for our sin. He came to this earth to die. And the Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. Not of works lest any man should boast. You see, God's not looking for someone to be good. He's looking for someone to trust in Him as their Savior. Being good is good, but being good isn't good enough to get you to heaven, right? You've got to be perfect. Jesus Christ came to this earth to die for us. And the Bible says, For by grace you're saved through faith, and not of yourselves. If you trust Christ today as your personal Savior, you will spend an eternity with Him. That's forever. You know how long eternity is? It, you, you, it's, it's not even comprehensible. It's not even comprehensible. Let me end with this illustration. I heard this many, many years ago and uh, some of you may have heard it. Uh, imagine for me just with, with, for, with me just for just a moment an, an eagle. There's a lot of eagles around here and uh, imagine an eagle. Okay? An eagle soaring through the air nice and high and, uh, and in this eagle's claws is a thimble. Imagine the size of a thimble. And this eagle with this thimble in his claws swoops down and he takes a scoop out of the Mississippi River and flies away off into the, into the distance. And that eagle, a thousand years later, returns with an empty thimble. And he swoops down into the Mississippi River and he grabs a thimble full of water and flies away into the distance. A thousand years later, the eagle returns 
and swoops down into the Mississippi River, grabs a thimble of water and flies into the distance. How many years do you think it would take to empty the Mississippi River? And that is only one day in eternity. You know, we can't even comprehend eternity. It, 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 is, it is beyond us. If time was made for us, then we only can think in lengths of time, not eternity. And we can know for sure where we are going to spend our eternity. You might get 60, 70, 80 years in this world, but eternity is a very, very long time. My hope is that you don't leave this room without placing your faith in Jesus Christ. Mm.